Good morning and uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, sometimes when your CV gets read out, then you regret <laughs> <laughs> having put all those uh, flowery words and uh, achievements, uh, so supposedly achievements. But uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge the owners of this land, especially this particular area and New Zealand in general. I also want to acknowledge us visitors from outside of New Zealand. And um, I'm so privileged. You know, when I retired, I had no money. So I was praying to God, please, I want to go back to New Zealand, but I don't have any fears. And when Linda wrote me an email, I was delighted. I think I flooded back her inbox with thank you and emails, just getting ready to come. <clears throat> so this is my topic this morning, a traditional ecological knowledge and community-based marine conservation in Fiji. And um, this picture here is showing, you, you may not see it, right in the middle there is a 50-year-old net made of natural fibers. I'm going to look at you all the time because you give me confidence in the lorry this morning. Sometimes I lecture to 300 engineers um, <clears throat> and I wasn't as nervous because in this room I know there's a lot there's a thousands and thousands of years of work, community work, and knowledge in this room. It makes me nervous. Engineering boys weren't let out, uh, let out yet into the world, so I could talk down to them. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a 50-year-old Mbuningoni, right in the middle there, the old woman. Yeah, that's, that's what we are called at home. I'm called at home by my grandchildren at least. And the fishing net is used for the community fish drive. This happens in a lot of villages in Fiji, especially if we are going to have a big wedding for the, or a big meeting, if the village or the province is hosting a big national indigenous meeting, we do the Yavirao. And they all stand around and tap the water. Believe it or not, when I was doing research uh, for Messi, I found out that in some of the small Ayaviraos, you know exactly where you stand. That's exactly what I do with my fancy PhD. If I go back to the village, I know exactly where to sit. And it's not at the top. <clears throat> because I'm a commoner. And of course, things changed a bit to according to gender, not the chiefly, I still remain a commoner there. Because when we used to do community consultations and the men always say, okay, ladies, because remember we are Melanesians. It's, um, what's the word I forget? Because you're all looking at me so intensely. <laughs> when it's a male society, what is it called? Patriarchal. So the Melanesian Fijian men <clears throat> say, okay, ladies, stand up now, go and make a tea. We'll keep on talking. I said, no, it stops right here, especially if I convene the workshop. That's why I married a half Polynesian. Okay? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so this is just the end of, the, not quite the end, but the end of the big work because the beginning of this Yavirao is when they take the, in this particular village, which is in my province, they take the net out of where it is specially stored, how they make the Fijian buris, and they have a loft stored in a particular uh, meeting house in the village, and the men sit and mend the net. No woman is allowed in the room. They mend the net, they drag them out, and of course, there's a, <clears throat> a video capturing this, and of course, the process starts. Um, I do this. Okay, let me familiarize myself with this little gadget. Next one. 
here. This is the overview of the presentation. I'm sorry, coming from 20 years of academic background and knowing that um, my supposedly student, but actually you are teaching me. I've learned a lot in these last few days. This is, this presentation is going to be a bit wordy. So when you receive it later, you can read through the notes. No homework. The research uh, angle, so all this is the order of uh, presentation. <clears throat> First one. This was a game changer for me. I came from balancing equations on the blackboard, teaching analytical chemistry, pure biology to university students. So when my professor at Mass University sat me down and said, Winnie, you have to do something more useful that will impact your community. And I'm thinking, okay, and I'll just do land care and things like that. And said, you have to do traditional ecological knowledge. I almost fell off my chair and said, with social capital, by that time I recovered and I said, hmm, looking intelligent, I didn't have a clue what that word was. Okay, and um, for traditional ecological knowledge, I was so Western educated that um, I went to an exclusive boarding school just outside of Suva. When the lolly beat at eight o'clock in the morning, we are not allowed to speak Fijian anymore. And we only spoke Fijian when the lolly beat 3 p.m. in the afternoon on Friday. Otherwise, you get punished. The school's logo is a water lily songs about it and um, <clears throat> if you get punished part of it was to get into the pond with the frogs and uh, clean the water lily pond apart from weeding so we ended up with this topic I want to warn the PhD master students in here you send in your abstract <laughs> usually when you finish it what you finish with is very different that's very normal and very healthy because you come in like empty you do a lot of readings so after one and a half years i told my supervisor i'm lost he said hallelujah you are found <laughs> okay so this is what we ended up with and i use the common fiji mud crab on the brachyura species and as a metaphor to illustrate the interconnected of all things in an indigenous Fijian world. And of course, the Fijian way of life, the Mbula Vakavanua. Like the crab, it has to adapt to external changes and to survive and remain relevant. Otherwise, some of our cultural things, especially our young people, they think it's not relevant anymore. And some of our practices have to be changed because climate change has worsened things. And we have to change some of these things to cope with this uh, new uh, man-made created uh, world uh, events like flooding, hurricanes, etc. And this can be facilitated by Talanoa, where everybody sits down, they share, they reflect, they reframe their worldviews, perception, ultimately practices for the success of CBMC. But of course, Talanoa sometimes doesn't always work. Okay, and you can Talanoa in one day and accomplish it, or you Talanoa over three months, or even one year. <clears throat> and kinship is very important. It's our wealth. We, in Fiji, we are known as resource-rich, economically poor. And we Fijians do not measure our richness by how much bank balance we have. Because my pay packet never belonged to me. It belonged to my brothers and sisters, my children, grandchildren, the Matangali in the village, the Ayavusa, and we could never save any money, and I don't mind. I wouldn't have it any other way. Because the sign of your richness is when you have a wedding, or even when you die, which you will not be able to see, the number of people that come to your funeral. So kinship is our wealth, and kinship 
plays a crucial role as the medium, as the mode of transmission of this work that we do on the ground. I'm grateful to God for New Zealand. And I'm not lying because of three things. When I was still at FNU, I managed to secure some funding from MFAT to do research on developing a stream health monitoring kit, looking at invertebrates, because different types of invertebrates live in different conditions of water. The, um, not DFAT, that's the enemy across the Tasman. MFAT gave me funding for this, and I worked together with NIWA, and it helped me get my UNDP job because I quoted those two big research. And the UNDP um, saw that, recognized, and gave me a job after the PhD. Remember, I came in as a pure science person and walked away, I walked away as an anthropologist wannabe. And when people ask me, we do not get more clever when we do a PhD. For me, I became deeply embedded in my Fijian roots. I never appreciated my Fijianness, I'm sorry Fiji, until after I finished my PhD, looking at TEK and social capital. <clears throat> And of course, during the sh closed um, shutdown of 2021, there's a bit of publicity. I think some conversation went right up to um, government level that uh, why did they let in a UN person from Fiji who had Delta COVID? So when the plane arrived on Monday, I became a bit emotional because the last time I arrived here, I came in a small plane, the medivac plane of the UN, bringing me, you no, know, I'm brown, to, and I stayed for 10 weeks at Middlemore. So when I woke up, it was all over the news. When I woke up, my children from Fiji said, Mom, don't open your Facebook. Don't look at social media. Why? because everybody's not pleased with you from Fiji and from New Zealand. But of course, um, fortunate that under the UN, we pay a lot individually to, for, for uh, insurance. And I'm so grateful that New Zealand, whether you were happy with my coming or not, so grateful to New Zealand for that second lease of life. And I wondered, why did God save me again? And that's it. I'm supposed to be retired, but not retired. All this work that I'm doing, pro bono, and I think I'm starting to harvest. Thank you, Linda, and Sustainable Seas. You paid for my coming here, staying in a hotel. I haven't done that since I left you in DP. As soon as I finished in March, I had a blissful month of April last year. Then my province rang me up <coughs> where Suva is. And uh, believe it or not, Sufa City, all the people from that province, thank you, New Zealand. I was the first PhD. And people thought I knew everything. So we need, <laughs> thank you. We have a document here. Uh, can you please look at it for now? I said, okay. And they sent me a 146 page document as a first draft of the Sustainable Development Plan for Rewa. This is how small it is now. So I cut it down, went into the meeting. It was full of men, remember? Melanesians? And um, said, I've done this, this, this. During morning tea, I saw them gathering in the corner. When the meeting started, I found myself chairing the SDP committee. That's what God saved me for. Unfortunate that the Ministry of Itauke, that's why I had to go back for two hours, Ministry of Indigenous Affairs sees me as an advisor, uh, one of the six to advise on the current review of the Fijian administration in Fiji. First thing I said on Monday to all men that, hello, I'm putting my hand up here 
please do the Maori, the, what the Maoris are doing on Marie, uh, Moana fisheries, because in Fiji we are just into subsistence in our little Golingoli. Let's make partnership mandatory for those coming in in fishing companies for us to have some shares uh, into their work. Proposal writing, that, um, <clears throat> that was one of my big jobs in UNDP to find money for our 10 Pacific Island countries from the big funders, Green Climate Fund and the Global Environment Facility. And I'm doing that now for the communities and getting back into the Small Grants Project a Committee of the UNDP to approve our proposals and improve proposals that come from um, communities. I'm part of the Gospel Church in Fiji. It's the Open Brethren. And we had people from New Zealand who came to Fiji to start up the Gospel Church in Fiji. And we have about four schools uh, with about almost 2,800 students. And uh, I now chair the board for the Gospel Schools. That's why I was given a second lease of life so this is finding from my messy research, which has formed the basis of how I worked in life since 2011. Interconnected of all things. When we went, when we were formulating for this strategic development plan, when I became a member of the executive committee of the Fiji locally managed marine area, this locally managed marine area just looked at the local fishing ground where the adjacent villages manage those fishing grounds. And um, <clears throat> the uh, interconnected of all things. And of course, Talanoa has dialogue and that we have to, poops, okay, wait, crab. Um, we have to do um, all this work Within, we took advantage of the fact that Fijians have a very strong kinship system. And the use of metaphors, this made sense to the people. The crab is an academic work. Actually applied it in here for Rewa, and we use this time the mud lobster. When you talk about the mud lobster, the mana, or if I say, um, I'm from Rewa, they'll all say again, oh, mana because the mud lobster is rare because our place is just uh, mangroves and they, that suva, that is all reclaimed area, most of it. And we are marsh people, ma mangroves. So um, <clears throat> this crab, for instance, has a saying, like a lot of our animals have a saying. Crab saying is, I'll walk how you walk, mother because baby crab saw, was walking behind mother crab. Mother crab turned around and said, why are you walking sideways? Said, I'm just walking how you're walking, mother. And that is how tradition is done. We be careful how we walk, because whether we know it or not, the younger generation are watching us. And hopefully there will be some in that next generation that will pick up on what we are doing at community level for conservation and run with it. Um, and of course, the crab is surrounded by other factors, the political, social, economic, etc. And this has to be appropriately integrated. The voice, for me, three types of voice, indigenous voice, a woman, it's not easy being a Melanesian woman, and of course, coming from a fisher tribe. If I throw a fishing line in one of the drains outside, I'll catch a fish. I'm kidding, but the mana is, is there. When we, we are actually fisher tribe um, for our paramount chief. And uh, some of these voices are not expected to be heard in some of the forums. The um, current SDP work for community engagement is influenced by findings from Mass University. So it has influenced my UNDP work, for instance, for the Jeff 5 cycle. The Jeff is global environment funding. New Zealand does not receive it, 
because New Zealand is contributing to the fund. Thank you again, New Zealand. So this goes to developing countries. We managed to secure 92,000 US. That was just when I joined USP after, uh, UNDP after two years. And when we were doing formulation, I snuck in the TEK objectives. So some of the countries really worked on their TEK. That's the crab. And this makes more sense to the people. Imagine if we went back to Rewa and put a lovely diagram there, boxes and arrows, they'll forget it. But with the, crab, with the lobster for the Rewa people, it made sense to them. When we went back after three months, they told us, sit down. We will tell the people about the SDP work. What did they do? They just talked on the crab because the eyes represents the two world views. If I get sick, I will not think of how much food I've been eating over there. It's, it's very sinful, gluttonia. But I will think, oh my God, did I do something wrong for the Vanua? Haven't, haven't I prayed enough this week? That's the world views, always influenced by that. Four legs here is values, the four legs for traditional ecological knowledge. And the four legs, the other side, is social capital. This DEK cannot work without the people. And the social capital is a capital. It's not financial. It's a capital that we have to develop. We'll look at it a bit later. And, and of course, outside, how do I turn on the lights? <gasps> OK, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Something happened. Yes, this is the crab metaphor. What's the diagram before this? The crab. See, now they are prompting me. Okay, thank you. Physiologically, biology, you look at the parts of an animal or a tree, you label it and their function. So, physiologically, the two eyes are the two worldviews, the shell signifies governance, the government and the vanua and Lotu. No, we are very religious people in the Pacific. When we had um, UNDP res rep, uh, she was Jewish, she said, Winnie, we, I've never prayed so much till I came to the Pacific. Because when we met cabinet, first thing, we pray. She should have come to New Zealand. We go into the field even, we pray before and we pray before we leave yesterday, okay? so. These are the three things, the Lotu, the government and the Vanua, which serves as a protection and as a guide for us. The flesh, that is the most precious part, that's the people. And of course the legs, four legs each I use, these have to work together. In order to, for the crab to move, those sideways, but as a, as a crab, okay? And, um, the essence, this happened after PhD. I didn't have essence in my thesis, but we had essence for the mana. Okay, so it's a delicacy for Fiji people, usually identified with my province. That's why even the, the saying is said in my language, no muingai ngai ngai no muingai ngai, that's my dialect. And how I'll walk how you walk mother. And there's molting. The Vakatuka Castle. During molting, molting happens when the crab becomes bigger, when this changes. And that's going to happen in our communities when there's a change of government, a big change of weather. So change could happen in one day or months or years. But if that's a most vulnerable period when we are talking with each other from community to cabinet in order to arrive at a conclusion, con a concurrence, or agree to disagree and still move forward. And of course, the crab can discard any part of its body anytime. That's why when you walk along the beach, or oh, we saw a crab as an invasive species here, 
But sometimes you walk along the beach, you see a, le a leg of a crab or the pincers, the big ones. And um, <clears throat> because they discuss, disc uh, discard it themselves. Because when they get caught, like uh, if somebody catches you maybe in the war, the Maoris or Fijians, when we were still uh, practicing cannibalism, you can just let go of that limb and grow another one. That's what we have to do in our culture. Some of the things, this is not being disrespectful, has to be thrown away. When our relatives die in Fiji, we do wakes for three days. And families come and we can't chase them away because they come and express their sorrow, but some are coming to eat and just relax in your house. And compared to our Indian brothers and sisters in Fiji, when somebody dies, you're not allowed to light a fire in that house. But if somebody dies in your house, we have a quick family meeting, clear that place for the umu, for the love of the eye and there. Go and buy one cow, one goat, chicken, everything. Okay, we died, we died too, we the died dead. Okay, so, next one. We have to lose some of this practices, traditional ecological knowledge. When my professor told me, write on Tiki, I said, my God, there's so little to write about how ignorant that statement or thinking was. Because from Fikret Burks, and I'm so happy he's here, he's going to tell Fikret Burks, you have a step-grandchild in Fiji. I quoted this Canadian native a lot. Because he, apart, I saw this yesterday in the Canadian presentation. I was so excited. It's a knowledge practice belief. And I did the Fijian, T-E-K, based on that. It's values and beliefs, sacred ecology. It's the beliefs that we have for our environment. Like in one part of Fiji, the veata, you do not the sea urchin, we eat it. But when you get this uh, particular village, lots of villages, they do not throw rubbish of the veata just like that. They dispose of it nicely. Because if they do that, once they see that uh, there's a little veata on the shore, then they usually say, yeah, these were the visitors from Suva that were here. They just threw the rubbish like that. And when you go into gardening, you clear your plantation, dispose of that rubbish nicely as a compost, or otherwise this rubbish, if, if left there, they can eat the ndalo that's still, and when you harvest, they are skinny. These are beliefs that helped us to look after our environment, and there's so many others. So that sacred in ecology, belief in punishment for those who do wrong, and that's more powerful than the police. Okay, so, uh, and the stewardship attitude. I was coming with my husband who comes from the Coral Coast, where there are big hotels, and I said, look, you've still got a lot of green land, hills, rolling hills, compared to the marsh in Rewa. Why don't you use it? And you know what? We are keeping this for the future generation. We just want to sit and look at it in our economically poor state, which is not a measure of our wealth, and we are happy with the environment. So stewardship is the attitude we usually have in Fiji of keeping it for the next generation, the knowledge. It includes the ecology, knowledge of the ecology. You go in for consultation on marine protected area, don't tell them what you think. The first time I went in, I didn't even talk much. Maybe it's the way I was dressed and sitting confidently. One of the old men in the village came and said, you think you're the professor from the university? We are the professors in the village. You listen to that, I'm listening to you. It was just an uncle of mine, so. <laughs> We do not tell them because they know all the spots, the spots of ecological significance, of archaeological significance, of cultural significance, and that can be the basis of your conservation. Because I'll show you a diagram later. Um, marine protected areas, you don't have to do all no-take. You can do seasonal tambus 
or tumbles according to life cycles of your totem fish. Okay, <clears throat> too much full speed. Knowledge, that's it. You listen and practices are carried out for survival, but also to conserve the environment. And I've talked about that a bit, about covering rubbish when farming. Some of the practices like, I'm a fisherman, and some villages up in the, um, you will hardly find fishermen tribes in the mountains, but they are more warriors. And when we sit together to have a meal, I cannot eat fish, and they cannot eat pork. And instances, maybe it's strongly psychological, of my people um, actually choking on bones. So better you sit down and um, not tell, not know who the other people are. After you eat, then you, uh, after you eat the fish, then you try and find out where they are from, in case there are some warriors sitting in there. This is very strong, PhD or whatever, it's still at the back of your mind. And um, the skills, this is, these are inherited through birth, reinforced by oral transmission and training, on the hands training in the village. There are some uh, practices in fishing that even me as a female in my tribe, I'm not privy to that. It's only the men because they're usually the ones, but once my brothers um, just let it said to me, said, when we go, when the chief comes with a grog to ask us to go and fish, then we go and dive at night at the very dark places by ourselves so no women can see us. I said, why, why? I said, duh, dive, skin deep diving, or what do you call it? Yes, and that's when they catch the fish. And I'm not supposed to tell you that. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> and these skills could be possessed. You know, when I was here, no, in Wollongong actually, I had a very bad fracture. And I had to undergo six hours at the Wollongong Hospital of, and I'm a hospital fan, of uh, operation. When I went back, still limping, my mom told me, go to that village. Go to that house, there's a masseur there, traditional masseur. So when I walked in, he said, oh, make some tea. I said, oh my God, I don't have time to have tea, just massage my leg. I mean, I didn't say it loud, it was in my head. Then he said, move up. So I moved up and he said, oh, then he was just talking to me. Okay, this must be the preliminary, eh? I'm waiting for the big massage uh, action. And okay, so how did you break your leg? And uh, you mustn't do this or that. Okay, thank you, goodbye. I said, my God, okay, but we don't pay for it. Okay, and on the last day, then out of courtesy, you take something for this. My leg healed, believe it or not. And we still have rugby players from New Zealand and Australia they go to Nandromai in Nandronga. The same man does the same thing, just touch like that. I wish we can all must be monsieur, so we just touch like that. Okay, but we have to go to this, and they give the uh, medicine that goes with it. So I'm a traditional fisherman, okay? We do not have land. That's the implication. When the warriors were not warring, were not warring, they planted. So when the colonial first came, they asked, where's your land? Of course, oh, from there to there, because that's where they were planting. And the um, fishermen, oh, the sea, that's not land, okay? So we have very little land, the um, traditional fishermen. Okay, social capital, you have to have trust. Okay, so I uh, main uh, Putnam. I'm just putting references here for those university students who are here. You can use this. Google it further and they can link you to other authors. Putman and uh, social capital, he's the first one. Pretty is the first one that uh, talked about social capital and collective action. So four components I came up with, trust. You have to trust each other in a mutually 
supportive manner. And as leaders in your community, if you say something, then you must make sure from small things like, we are going to meet next week, or I'm going to try and finding fund for you for this. Whether you're a community lead leader or right up to uh, UNDP, we have to say, and I was usually the face of environment in the community, when we say we'll try and get funding for you, we will reflect your priorities in our log frame, it has to be there. And you have to keep on taking it back to show them. <clears throat> there has to be trust from community to cabinet level, C to C. There has to be reciprocation. You cannot keep on taking. You have to give back. You have to feed. I heard the word feeding. You have to feed, but you also have to give food back. Not literally like we have been enjoying these last few days, but uh, um, in uh, symbolism words. Whatever you, otherwise, you keep on taking for the, from the people. This happens in the villages. There are people who are known as takers, but they don't uh, reciprocate. And uh, nobody, this has been practiced from time immemorial. When you wanted to build a house, you call the Matesau, the carpenter of the village, to lead the building, and everybody comes. You go to, because you want to build your house, so if you don't go, by the time you call, nobody will come, okay? And norms and sanctions, we have rules. We have so many rules in now. I was just saying this morning, is this appropriate Fijian wear? No. Why? This is a puletas. I'm getting away with this. First day I came, I spied no Fijian. I'm going to get away with my puletas. The real Fijian chamber is the one that I wore on Monday, where the length of the dress is more, almost as long as the, the sulu underneath. But this length is for the Samoans. Or because my husband is half someone, I'm, by, I'm wearing that today. Okay, so <clears throat> it's a form of social control. It's unspoken. You know where to sit. If you're sitting the wrong place, you'll get punished, not by the people, but whoever's looking. We do not want to be going into, you know, people think, that's devilish, no. And um, if you're speaking when you're not supposed to, Nobody will listen. If you're supposed to go and help, in fusion we call it sole sole vaki, where we work together. And you just take yourself, your time, and even when you're asked to contribute, you have to contribute. I just re received an email last night, oh, there's a big installation, I need the roofing iron. I wanted to say, hey, I'm retired, let's give it. I'll go back home and hassle my sons. Um, so, the MPA, when we do the tambu, we do it both by grog, you know, with the with traditional, and we take the tala tala out to go and pray over the tambu area. Connectedness and network, and, uh, network. This is, I've said about this already, about the mbati, the warriors and the fishermen, how we you know, this is probably how they um, allocated food enough for everybody. When we all sit, okay, you people are the warriors, just eat fish. You people are the fishermen, just eat pork. Otherwise, we'll both be fighting for pork and fish. Okay, that's what I think. But uh, there are ways in which we practice things to respect each other's boundaries. And of course, like I said before, Kinship is very important, where everything is played out. Now, I don't know if it's in New Zealand, but I have a fish, I have a plant, and I don't have a bird, okay? But all Fijians have a totem, and it's associated with you coming from your place. And um, usually they say that for the animal, for instance, sometimes you show the tray of that particular animal, okay? Or, and um, of course, 
how are totems identified by our ancestors? This, of course, these are two indigenous people too. They said that the culturally salient species that shape in a major way the cultural identity of a people, as reflected in the fundamental um, roles that these species have in their diet, materials, possession, spiritual practice, but what they probably forgot to put there, ecology, because my fish is abundant in where I come from. So when somebody says Ngaka, she's from Nevelab, okay, traditional. Every Fijian has that, and um, it forms as a basis of protection. This first ever conservation site in Fiji is Verata. It's about 15 kilometers from Suva, and what happened? They eat crabs. They don't eat the kaikoso. I, I'm scared to use this, but you can see the kaikoso there is a shellfish. That is their totem. And uh, they eat the crab. Then they saw that uh, the Angolingolis were being re de um, depleted of crabs. Then they realized, because they don't eat the kaikoso, that it was because their totem was uh, thinning out. Why? They said some of the women have been harvesting it and selling it in the market. That's taboo. Because it's supposed to only feed uh, the people. And what does the kaikoso do, the shellfish? It, like a uterus, it keeps the baby crab. So sometimes when you eat kaikoso in Fiji, you open the shellfish, the kaikoso, baby crabs are inside. So because the women, see how this works? First time I said this to my supervisor, he said, wait, 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 just go through that again, because I said, the land is barren, why? Because they are fighting for the title of the chief. And this is coming from a biology teacher. Okay, so same thing here. But this is proven biologically that a cycle, part of the life cycle of a crab involves being incubated in the shellfish. These um, villagers knew that. They didn't need somebody to come and tell them. But we, and then we came in and talked about the life cycle from the Western science uh, knowledge. So the sayings, like I've said already, that a shark saying is, guess what? Run away, little fish. Soon it'll be high tide and I'll get you. Okay, because the little fish can tease the shark and run away into the mangroves. The modes of transitions of this TEK, it could be through tales, but sadly for us in the Pacific, we are not paper document people, but oral transmission. So there's so many versions. So when you say your version, you said, I apologize if my version is different from your version, but this is how it came down through our families. The traditional chants. The chants, I hear a lot of chanting in Maori. We don't really chant in public, the Fijians. But when we go to our villages, we chant. And that Fijian boarding school I went to, we chant. We chant the whole time. And uh, the mekes, different types of mekes, and the songs and the poems. Once when I was in Vanolevu, in one of my sites, they said, you know what? We've been trying to get everybody together, all the old men and all the old women, to get the wordings of this young song. It was hard for even the young people to come because they were all watching the sevens. We are not doing so well in sevens. In the, in the big meeting house. So we sat down, we wrote it out, everybody was putting in, men and women. And when we finished, they sang it and it ended right there. Said this is our taboo song you cannot release it in your thesis or release it to the world. And some knowledge is like that. You have to respect them. If they share it with you, feel so privileged. But don't speak a word of it to anybody. And don't you dare write it. So one of our other races came to me because through Messi, thank you Messi, I became a TEK 
kind of person to kind of go-to person, said, Winnie, can you please look at my thesis? And this person had documented how a village made its salt from I said, no, you cannot do this. Did you ask for permission? Because we cannot just share any knowledge. So, <clears throat> and even poems. But now you open the radio, it's just love songs. So kinship. I come in Fiji, there's three big confederacies. So I belong to a confederacy, every indigenous vision. And I belong to a province, which is Rewa. And I belong to a district, which is Nodo. And I belong to a village, Naivilava. Naivilava is a bit famous in Fiji because we are the peace village. Why? Because our ancestors, being fishermen, they were the first one to see the boat, the uh, indentured laborer's boat. Uh, on the shores of the, um, and they swam out and rescued these people, the Indian identified laborers, and of course buried some of them too at our village. Okay, so the Girmit descendants, thank you, came back and labeled us the Peace Village. So that's my core there, and um, I have a Navusa, there's a smaller organization to a Koro and sorry to a village so in the village there can be one or several levels i have a matangali i have a tokatoka and right now after i don't know how many years i don't want to say a number of years i might be wrong maybe 30 or 40 the itauke affairs coming around again to establish who is the correct holder of the chief's title who is the correct holder of the chief title from the district to the village level to the Yavusa level, Matangali level. And after about a hundred years, we, my little family, got back our traditional Mbete role. That is, um, shall I say, the priest, the priest of the village. So I asked my husband, with his thumb on my bad, bad move, asking him, so what I'm going to do now that I'm priest? He said, he has to dance to the moon, you know? And, um, but we can translate it to this because we are going back to Mbete, to priest, and that was just confirmed about last month. So this uh, review of identifying is a big movements now going out in Fiji, done by the Ministry of Tokyo. A lot of people are happy. You know why? Because we believe that if the correct chief is sitting there, if the correct leader is sitting there, the mana will automatically come over the land where there will be peace, where there will be harvest in the sea and on land. And of course, like I was saying before, our wealth is here now. It's okay. So you can imagine I have a long list on who to get what. So first stop is at Kmart, because when I get back, all the relatives will be coming, okay? Just come to see. Of course, they know they'll walk away with something, because when they come back from overseas, I'm also going to go to their house for a cup of tea, okay? So, and of course, when you meet and greet somebody, you say where you're from. We do not call each other by the first name, never. Okay, my brothers, as soon as I got married and had a child, I became Tinai Felipe. Felipe is my eldest son. Even up to today, he calls me Tinai Felipe. When my first grandchild was born, then they call you Bui Soy, my eldest grand Soyalo from Samoa. So, <clears throat> Bui Soy. You do not call each other, and there's very respectful relationships. I cannot joke with my brother. In my province, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, can also be my husband wife joking. In my husband's province, I can't even talk to them. So you have to school yourself, and people will help you come in school. Because sometimes you walk in, you do the wrong thing. Somebody will pull you aside. You are not supposed to be talking to that person. Imagine what works in conservation. 
if somebody is the chair that you're not supposed to talk to, and the treasurer is walking away with all your conservation money, what's going to happen? How can the committee members say, you took talk to each other? No. So we still maneuver around them. Now they're getting smarter. They make sure they write, um, appoint the right people in the committee, people who can communicate with each other. So these are some of the things that we call each other by on this left-hand side, sorry, so small. And the next one, please, is other stakeholders. We mustn't forget, at the community, we need the government. So for us, conservation in Fiji, we need the Itauke affairs, the indigenous affairs, the rural development, fisheries, environment, forestry, I forgot the Department of Climate Change. We have other reasons, especially in Suva, for Rewa. We have informal and formal settlements, and we have those who lease the land, because we have freehold, crown lease, and of course, native land. And the churches and the schools, which we can use as for teaching and for helping us do some environmental work, so they do uh, hands-on training too. NGOs are very important in Fiji. So we have that locally managed marine area, where all these CI, WCS, Conservation International, World Conservation Society, WWF, they all came in. And this is a conversation on one of our emails. Now, this is reciprocation going on at, even at that level. All this work was going to be done without the formal knowledge of the organization. And if they knew about it, they will support it. Because all these people, and I know where each one, each province comes from. Because when they call and they put my name on the list like that, I'll go take your expertise. So all these people, some of them, all of them have bachelors, some have masters. And they work in all these different organizations. And <clears throat> this is the locally managed marine area, the type of tambos. Those are the tools that are there on the right. You have the no-take area, species refugia, where the spe uh, specific species cannot be caught in a particular area, mesh size, so tool size, and of course, um, these sites are determined by the villagers because they know best. And uh, we just help them with the... Um, there are two things that are, that are put in the brackets over there, the spillover. So when you have a tambu area, biologically, the spillover comes. But you get a vasu. Who is the vasu? That's the chief's sister's son. He comes in and say, Momo, my, you know he's a chief. Momo is the chief. Your, I mean, your Momo, your mother's brother. I want some fish. Can I go and fish in that area? And if the people are watching, the pe this person, nobody can see anything. That's the right of the vasu. Okay, and that's sometimes, it's happening less, but it's still happening. And those are the Ngolingolis. Sorry, this map is from 2009. And that's what I'm talking about when the, um, okay, last slide, then I find my little chip. I hope it works. Oh no, <laughs> too far away from Fiji. See the blue area? The blue area is where the Ngolingoli is. And one word is Verokovi. Verokovi means respect. It's going to be very rude for me to walk up here, walk on the side. If I walk past people, I say too low, too low. Okay? Oh no, the young people. Some, even some adults too are not doing it anymore. Um, so the, these were the places that were locally managed way back in 2009. And I think one of the, um, the, elect, the international agreements that Fiji has ratified is that they will protect, I don't know what percentage, it was quite high, of the Angolingolis by 2030. Okay, so those are the Ngolingoli areas that I was talking about. There's still an open sea here, which we do not know how to get into and help the government manage. That's Talanoa, 
everybody coming together. But the important box is here in the middle. These are some vision values, fellow money, where you love each other. Your cousin gives us for money because you need to give it. Because reciprocation, one day you might go back. You just have a general aloma for everybody. And respect. Respect each other. The other one is to care for each other. You know, you see somebody not feed, you see in the village or even in towns, as soon as somebody dies, the neighbors get together. This is a Fijian. And we take and visit the person first before their relatives come from the village. That's just one example. Putting others first in a lot of things. When you get in the bus or when you're lining up, you say you first, putting other fir others first. And very wrong, wrong with it. Listen to listening to each other. This is all in my thesis, not only mine, in a lot of indigenous vision. These are the values that our old writers uh, first brought it up. I mean, first documented onwards and upwards. This is a saying that young people say nowadays, Toso Viti. Toso Si. What is it? Si. What is this challenge? I hope there's a phase two and a phase three, like we do for the countries. Um, you have to change the value in order to change the behavior. That's psychology. You change the value of the person, then the, I don't know where that came from, not Maslow's. Then you will change the behavior. So our project passion, when you're doing it and it's successful and they know it's good for the community, it will change into the Vanua passion. You do not have to uh, motivate them to carry on. When we do big projects, we do, the last paragraph is exit strategy. What are you going to put into place to make sure that this project is sustainable? And for us, it's easy. Project passion, because I don't know how it is for everybody else. When I go to my village, when I get off the car and step off the land, it's a different feeling. I'm home, I'm here. Yeah? Then you agree to disagree. This will be happening at all levels, C to C, from community to cabinet. Utilizing both forms of science, the different knowledge systems, the ways of knowing. My first cousin, our fathers are brothers, I don't think he's ever heard about the SDGs, but he's a fisherman. <clears throat> His priority is to put food on the table as was the UNDP worker. My priority is fish under the sea. I even forget now after one year which SDG was that. And somehow when we go in, we have to marry the priorities. And we have to come up with many KPIs, indicators, so that it's measuring his, the number of fish does that very well. And it also meets the UN's goals of increased harvest. For him, nice increased harvest, feed family a little bit to sell on the side. The use of indigenous framework. So three of us run the ETOK research page on Facebook. There's about 8,000 to 9,000 ETOK blood there. And it's a safe space because Fijians are not really into studying and um, it's a safe space where we discuss each other. Why not into studying? We have other priorities. You know, we really love getting together, communities, kalavata, big dancing and everything, feeding together and helping each other. And um, that's what we do, a safe space, and where I'm really pushing for the use of indigenous framework. And that is the use of your totem or whatever it is, and of course, how you engage with the community. Even though in Fiji, you just go and sevu sevu to the chief, all the houses in the village is open to your questionnaires. No, that's not right. We have to marry it together with the pre and prior informed consent being given. Okay, so the next one for me personally, 
supposedly PhD were smart and all that, being involved in the ministry of it, okay, right up to the highest level where I can sit with a lot of men and only one other woman to discuss how we can make the narrative change for us indigenous Fijians being seen as resource rich, but economically Western poor, okay? And for us being an oral, um, oral transmission society, we have to learn like you people, document, document, document for multimedia, all the different forms of media. Okay, this is not sinful, I believe, for you to be an indigenous scholar. So there's this nexus. You know, I started from here, academic, and now I can proudly say I'm a practitioner. You know, influence really bringing uh, changes into people's lives, I hope. And wherever you are falling, don't feel bad. You can be 100% academic right now, like I was at one stage, but go back to the community and be useful. No, that's very bad wording. Um, in between. And when you, I'm so glad with the Canadians publishing, because I have to do a plan um, paper now, I haven't started for La Trobe University on how we engage with the community in coming up with this. And my list of authors will be like about 14, 15. And that's the last line. I'm sure you're not quite interested in the MDGs of the UN, the SDGs of the UN. So MDGs, Millennium Development Goals, ran up to 2015. 2030, the Strategic Development Goals will finish. So there's about 40 of us from the uh, indigenous people all over the world. We were taken to, how, to uh, LA and we sat down and we mapped all these indicators of the 17 strategic development goals of the UN that are ending in 2030. How much of it reflected indigenous aspirations? Very little. So we must fight that the next set of G's, not G-string, the next set of G's must carry a lot more of indigenous aspirations. I'm sorry, now I'm looking at you. I know you stood over there and I ignored you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Tēnei te mea i aro a kia koe e te whaia, te whaia wini mō te kōrero i tēnei ata. Um, I actually wish, I'm wishing now that we got Fai wanting to speak on the first day because she has spent the last two days absolutely freezing. Um, <laughs> this would have helped. Oh my god, it would have. No, thank you. The, um, I will talk a little bit about the design of the blanket because actually it's really relevant to, I guess, the journey that Firewinnie has been on. So the, the design on this um, Noa blanket speaks to, the, to resilience, and we heard lots about that um, in Firewinnie's quarter this today, and acknowledges our relationship with the natural environment. The design story highlights a historical event in which, in which Te Toka a Tirikawa, a rock standing firm in the ocean, is a reflection of our resilient spirit when facing challenge and adversity. The design is also a call to action to support our efforts for climate change as our resilience is dependent on the resilient nature of our natural world. And I just thought that so beautifully um, suited Fire Winnie this morning. So join me again in thanking her, please. Yeah.